more than a quarter of the world's reefs are at risk of extinction, and just under a third of these habitats are at moderate risk from human disturbances. The corals in Hikaru Sri Lanka are bleaching in vast numbers due to a variety of threats. According to the data we collected, 80% of the corals in Hikaru are already bleached or undergoing severe bleaching. These environmental catastrophes are due to our negative actions. The causes such as extraction of corals for souvenirs, coral mining for limestone and creating hotels near beaches that dump waste into the sea also contribute to the destruction of coral reefs. There are several implications to our actions such as extinction of ecosystems and species. Global warming, less protection from tsunamis, and coral diseases caused by our waste. In this project, we were to gauge the health of the coral reefs off the coast of Hekadua to understand more about the coral reefs and restorations. Interviews, research and a field study was conducted to determine the extent of the damage and to examine the effectiveness of the management strategy. Some of the most common methods of collecting data used by scientists, marine biologists and environmentalists around the globe include a biodiversity count, coral cover percentage, composition of species, occurrence of diseases and live dead coral numbers. However, collecting just one type of data cannot represent the coral reef's health. They only represent condition of particular coral. To get the best accurate assessment of the coral, it is essential to use all of the means available to scientists. On 30th March 2012, students from OFC Grade 8 conducted a field survey to determine the health of the coral reef off the coast of Hikadua, Sri Lanka. The method which we used to identify the coral condition was by examining the extent of bleaching by using color code charts provided by Coral Watch. We utilized these coral health charts to conduct our underwater research. The coral color charts are based on actual colors of bleach and healthy coral. The concentration of symbionts is directly linked to the health of the coral. All we had to do was to match the color of the coral with the color in the coral health monitoring chart. You then record the matching color codes along with coral type, species if possible. Here are the data we collected from monitoring our species around Hikadua area, namely branch coral, border coral, plate coral, and soft coral. From the identified species of coral, we compared the results from seven groups and found an average number to determine these statistics. All hard corals, border, branch, plate, are severely bleached and are more in numbers compared to the soft coral species. Surprisingly, and to our relief, the soft coral were observed to be more healthier, but less in numbers. Humans have been benefiting from coral reefs for centuries. This has led to drastic changes to the nature of surrounding reefs and its habitats. Overfishing has damaged food chains and the underwater species numbers all around the world. Humans fish for predators of sea urchins, such as porcupine fish, leading to extensive numbers of sea urchins, which can overwhelm the coral reef as they eat and kill the corals. The used to be coral reefs become so covered with algae that animals can build new colonies for them to live in, which leads to extinction of sea creatures in the long term. There are several initiatives undertaken by governments and locals to protect coast and marine ecosystems through coral reef restorations, conservations, and better management here in Sri Lanka. To name a few initiatives by local non-profit organizations, Nature Conservation Group initiated work in Rumasala in 1992. Under the Reef Keeper program initiated in 1997 to promote coral reef restoration and conservation through the development of coral nurseries and stabilizing of damaged reef surfaces, 
through replanting and monitoring and reef cleaning activities in order to improve reef health and aesthetics. Nature, tourism and tour guiding for village youth and publications were implemented. The team is now developing innovative techniques for managing invasive species and sensitive coral buildings. Also work with fishermen and youth to raise awareness and advocate sustainable ways to use the reef for economic gain. Ikkarua National Park is one of the two marine national parks in Sri Lanka. It was declared a nature reserve and later a national park in 2002 to reduce degradation of coral reefs. Follow this initiative, other popular reefs also consider special protected area. National and state governments can limit fishing, license collectors, outlaw some fishing practices and set up protected reserves. Also, coral reef parks prohibit fishing and collecting. Healthy coral reefs can be affected by scuba divers. When coral reefs are stood up on or sometimes even touched, they are damaged and have a slow recovery. They are very fragile and might die. Marine biologists report seeing some dead coral in the shape of divers' fins. What can we do to save the corals? Well, actually, we can switch off the lights once again. And then we can try not to break them when we are there because, I mean, when we do the transplantation, of course, we uh, try to have a good success rate, but on the natural, uh, in the natural uh, settings, uh, often the corals that are broken just end up dying. And uh, yes, so, and then we can try to, to always produce and farm more corals and understand more about them, so that. Manipulate them better. Try to see if we can, you know, eventually select the right corals and end up having some more resistant breed. About 80% of the coral reefs of the coast of Ikado, Sri Lanka, is already bleached or undergoing severe bleaching. Though there are several methods that are used to monitor coral reefs, such as Mantado, time swim, transex, and quadrants to determine its health. The method which we used was limited to gauging the extent of coral bleach. Our data was unreliable because some groups did not record the data properly and even made up data which may have affected the trend. Another issue with the data was that there were two readings recorded for each coral, the lightest and the darkest color. The problem with this was that we had to take an average of two values in order to arrive at a single number for our assessment. If all students were separated into groups of two, there would have been more reliable data. Also, if each group had done specific location, we would have covered a wider area. I found that science played an important role in identifying the causes of coral degradation and scientists have developed reliable techniques to determine the health of coral reefs. However, there are no concrete solutions yet to stop or reverse the degradation of coral reefs around the world. Though techniques such as coral farming, which is basically growing artificial reefs by using healthy corals, are being used to try and restore damaged reefs. It is not scalable enough to prevent global destruction of coral reefs. The only reliable way to save the coral reefs is to stop global warming and to inform laws to prevent human impacts on coral reefs.